वर्णनाथ संसा छंद मंगला चकर्ता वंदे वाणी विनायक भवानी शंकर वंदे श्रद्धा विश्वास याभ्याम विना न पश्य सिद्धास्वास्थमीश्वर वंदे बोधमय निम गुरु शंकर यमाश्रितो हि वक्रोपी चंद्र सर्वत्र वंद्यते अतुलित बलधाम हेम शैलामदेह धनुज वन कृशानु ज्ञानीनाग्रगण्यम सकल गुण निधान वानराधीश रघुपति प्रिय भक्त वात जात नमा मनोजव मारुतुल्य वेगम जितेन्द्रिय बुद्धिमता वातात्मज वनरयूथ मुख्यम श्रीराम दूत शरण प्रपद्ये श्रीराम दूत शरण प्रपद्ये नीलामुजश्यामलकोमलांगम सीता सरोपित वाम भागम पाणसा कचारुचापम नमा राम रघुवंशनाथ नमा राम रघुवंशनाथ हरिओ गोविंद जय जय गोपाल जय जय गोविंद जय जय गोविंद जय जय गोपाल जय जय गोविंद जय राधा रमन हरि गोविंद जय जय राधा रमन हरि गोविंद जय जय गोविंद जय जय गोपाल जय जय गो गोविंद जय जय गोपाल जय जय गोपाल जय जय गोपाल जय जय गोपाल कृष्ण का नया लाल की जय when we left it last night we were seeing bhagwan shri we were seeing hanuman ji now bolting out towards lanka and i told you this is the journey that every being has to make to find happiness to find peace because that is all we are looking for really we are not we don't want anything else in this world we want happiness hmm? and this journey every jeeva has to make and in that journey no journey is smooth there'll be bumps huh? and so you may put shock absorbers but there will still be bumps It means obstacles will come in our path and you know that very well especially when you're on the spiritual path your mind works very well until you sit for meditation <laughs> hmm your mind does whatever you want until you sit for meditation then chahu disi phire goes in all directions see the obstacles that is how it comes so hanuman ji now bolts out towards lanka and on the way very many obstacles come on that path and first he encounters there there is mainak parvat but mainak was living under the ocean and he came out there very interesting thing mainak is a mountain it is said that in the old days mountains used to fly 
they all had wings, you know. And those fellows were in very indiscriminating, very um, indisciplined. And so they used to just fly about and land anyway, on top of the heads of rishis and all. <laughs> so Indra Bhagwan one day called all these mountains, okay, you all line up here. And they all lined up. Because he's the king of the gods. And he lined them up and he cut off their wings. That is why all mountains are always in a line. You see that like that? <laughs> <laughs> like that some story is there. Now, anyway, this Mainak, at that time, he flew away and Sagar, the ocean, gave him refuge. He was hiding under that ocean. So Indra did not get to cut off his wings like that. Now, we'll see that. Anumanji is bolting out towards Lanka and this Mainak Parvat is there. Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jalani di Raghupati Dut Vichari Tai Mainak Hoi Shramahari Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Hanuman Te Hi Parsa Karapuni Ki Na Pranam Ram Kaj Ki Ne Binu Mohi kaha vishram siyavar ram chandra ki Jai sharanam sita ram siyavar ram chandra ki Jai sharanam sita ram siyavar ram chandra ki Jala nidhi ragupati dhuta bichari tai mainak hoi shramahari Nuanji is going and suddenly from under the ocean comes out this Mainak Parvat. Sagar told him, you know, you go. Bhagwan's Duta is going. You go and offer him some help. So the mountain comes out and he tells to Hanumanji, take a rest. Eat something, drink something. Maybe he offered him some mountain dew. <laughs> Possible. <laughs> so, drink something, eat something, take a rest. And Hanumanji replied very nice in it. Hi, says Hanuman te parasa karapuni ki na pranam. Hanuman touched him, touched that Mainak Parvat, and then he did pranam. And he said, Thank you, but no thank you. Rama kaja ki ne binu mohi kamishra. Until I finish the work of Bhagavan Sri Ram, where is there rest for me? There is no rest. I am on a mission to do the work of Rama. So I can't rest. That is the idea. And he continues on the journey. It looks like a very small interaction. It looks like a very little hmm, interchange between both of them, but it is a very, very significant thing. Huh? See, many things are there in that. One thing is, Mainak Parvat. Mountains, you know, they represent lethargy. Lethargy, you know, Thomas. Tamasic. They just sit there, big weight, it's very difficult to move them. Hmm? So Thomas is like that. When Thomas takes over the mind, very difficult to move. So, first of all, he represents Thomas. Second thing, is he represents procrastination. Procrastination, you know, whenever we have something good to do, we always put it off. If something bad, we never put off that. But something good we always 
put it on. How postpone that? How many times we say, oh, oh we take this resolution, and especially in this country, people take New Year resolution. No? What is your New Year resolution? They say, first January, you take resolution, January 2nd, we break it. <laughs> huh? So, we put off that thing. I keep postponing. I will start yoga. Instead of yoga, we start bhoga. <laughs> Some things like that, you see? So, that is called procrastination. He represents that. So, he is telling Hanumanji, you rest. Leave that mission, you take some rest. We'll see about that after. You eat and drink. Khao pio majakaro. We'll see about other things after. This is called tamas, this is called procrastination, this is called um, laziness, all of these type of things. All, all things that come from sleep, slut, slumber. All things that come from tamas. You see? And this is one of our biggest problems actually for a sadhaka to get started. I tell you, Jeeva is such a being. If you tell this fellow, I said, Take hai, Ram Charit Manas Satsang is going on there. You come there. He'll ask 100 questions. Hmm. You tell this fellow, I said, Chalo, let's go. There's a party going on on the beach there. He'll never ask any question <laughs> that time. So, whatever is not good for him, he doesn't ask any question. What is good? He asks all sorts of questions. So, this Mainak Parat represents this thing. To really get this person moving. There is something that always blocks that jiva. Blocks that sadhak. That is called tamas. All and all its manifestations. So, that. You know, it is also said that Obstacles, and see, this is the first obstacle. He meets Mainak Parvat. And let me tell you something. Hanumanji is incarnation of Lord Shiva, isn't it? Bhagwan Shiva incarnation. Then, Bhagwan Shiva is married to Parvati Ji. Parvati Ji is son of and daughter of Himalaya. Himalaya, mountain god. And this Bainak Parvati is also son of mountain god. So this Parvati is brother. This is her own brother. And this is Lord Shiva's incarnation. So in other words, the, the obstacles do not come from very far. <laughs> it's so close. In this case, the obstacle is from from within is the tamas in our own heart, you see. Really human beings, we go on blaming the world for this, blaming the world for that, you caused this, that one caused that, there are so many people caused this and so many things. Really, we are the cause. We are the cause for our own uplift or our own downfall. We should not blame anybody in this world. Eh? Very close. But there is one thing which is also said about that. When the obstacles come from very close, that means we are also very close to our goal. Vibhishan received obstacles from his brother Ravan, his own brother. Sugri from his own brother. Uh, our uh, Hiranyakashipu kicked his own son. So when the obstacles come from our own brother, our own son, our, you know, right there, that means we are also very, all of them got Bhagavad Darshan, isn't it? So when the obstacles are coming from close at home, it means that we are also very close. There's a good sign also. I told you yesterday, no? everything has positive and negative. So, Hanumanji said, gave the most fitting reply. And this is how we have to deal with our, with the tamas that we encounter in our mind all the time. Thanks, but no thanks. And he continues on his journey. We have to make a very clear, unambiguous refusal to give in to certain things. And especially in today's world, where we face this great barrage of things from the external world. If we don't make a very strong effort to shut out things, we have, it, it, too much is there today. 
And you, anything you're doing, you're ping. <laughs> Isn't it? It's coming from? There are so many devices we have. So many different sounds. And then sometimes a sound is made, you have to figure out which device is making this sound. <laughs> so, we have to be able to shut out things. I mean, we have to make a greater effort to shut out things, you see? So not only Hanuman, not only we have to, nowadays we have to say no, but we have to say no. <laughs> a very loud and emphatic no. You see? If we are not capable of doing that, we'll be in real trouble. So Hanuman Ji says, no. What is that? This Mainak Parvat also represents temptation. We are always tempted from. He's tempting him. Leave this and do. Temptation in today. Look, all big companies only spend their time figuring out how to tempt you. <laughs> it's true or not? True. Look here. You'll see. And they study this thing very well. I tell you, they all studied Vedanta. <laughs> <laughs> they do it so well. See, for example, what. In this country, all over the world, in Trinidad, everywhere you go, you know, KFC is there. Will you ever see any small little KFC sign like this? No. From, you, should, you should see that thing from two miles away. What well, big red sign will be there, isn't it? So with that big, they catch your eyes. One sense organ. <laughs> then, on that television, they put a jingle. 11 herbs and spices marinated and all of that. And they keep on finger licking. <laughs> if everybody knows the jingle, you see. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. That child from the womb, he's hearing that jingle. <laughs> he's hearing the jingle before he's born even. So, eyes gone also? Ears gone. Now, on television, they'll put a commercial and they, they'll train you. They'll train all of us. We are groomed without knowing eh, that you cannot eat that product with knife and fork. Even though the knife and fork is a Western tradition, you have to eat that thing with your... Have you ever seen anybody eating fries with their knife and fork? No, they train you how you should eat it. You have to. You must feel the grease. <laughs> So, they show you on the television how to so touch. They're better than puja. <laughs> One more sense organ. Then, they put secret recipe in that thing for that taste. And no, they, if any country asks, suppose I want to go into that country, any country asks, okay, tell that recipe, they say no. Okay, we don't allow you. Okay, we will not come in your country. They will not, they will forsake profit, but not give that recipe. Things which we hear are addictive, which when it lands on the tongue and all of that. So, tongue also, taste also, gone. And the best thing is, in their kitchen, there is an extractor exhaust fan, which they face right towards the road where you are passing there. <laughs> huh? So when you come there now, you last sense organ was left a smell. When you pass there, you, they smell that. And, and then right there, now there's drive through starts. And you want to turn this way, but the car is turning this way. All, they have studied this thing so well, and they have caught all the five senses. senses. So well they do it. Then, they, the human being becomes a victim to that thing. The jiva becomes a victim to that. And goes on and on and on like that. So they call it temptation. He says, opportunity knocks once. But temptation leans up on the doorbell. <laughs> This is how it is, how strong it is, you see. This Mainak Parvat, he represents this. You know, see how pervasive he is. Tutsi Das Ji just writes three lines for Mainak. 
But this is how pervasive this thing is in a jiva's life. From all sides he is tempted. From all sides, tamas. From all sides, everywhere. This tamas becomes his greatest enemy. So if the jiva is not mindful, and see what makes Hanumanji mindful here now, you know. I am on a mission to do the work of Ram. If he doesn't remember this, it, we get lost. I am on a mission to reach the self. I am on a mission to reach Paramatma. I am on a mission to realize myself or whatever. If we don't have that goal clear in our mind, we get swept away in this whole thing. All right. So that much. Now, Anumanji tells, no thanks. And he goes on. Then, it is not going to go that smoothly, I told you. Now see, next. Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Shri Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Jat Pavan Sut Devan Dekha Shri Ram Jai Ram Jane Kau Bal Budhi Visesha Shri Ram Jai Ram Surissa Naam A Inke Mata Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Pacha Inyai Kahi Tehi Mata Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Aaj Suran Mohi Deen Ahara Shri Ram Jai सुनत बचन कह पवन कुमारा श्री राम जय राम राम काज करी हिरी में आओ श्री राम जय राम सीता कई सुधी प्रभु ही सुनावो श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम जात पवन सुत हनुमान जी going now देवन देखा दी देवास देशो Hanumanji is going there. Then, Janai Kahu Pala Buddhi Visesha. They wanted to know whether he has the Bala and the Buddhi. These two things. Bala and Buddhi. Sufficient enough to achieve his goal. And actually, these are the two most important gunas for a sadhaka. That Bala means strength. Inner strength to persevere. Inner strength to continue. Courage. Bala, inner strength and courage and perseverance and all of that sort of thing, right? If we don't have on the spiritual path, no progress. Then, buddhi, we also must have a great intelligence. And buddhi here is, of course, the opposite of tamas. We must be clear in our thinking, intelligence, intellectual might, and all that sort of thing, you see? So, the devas thought, let us test him. Let us test this Hanumanji to see whether he will be able to achieve. So, the person must develop these two very important things that he called Bala and Buddhi, strength and courage and, and inner perseverance and all that. Forbearance and so many things will are there. We will see in the morning class. And that intelligence. Then, Surasanam Ahina Kaimata. 
means to say they sent Surasano. She is the mother of all the serpents. Some different region. They summoned her and go there and test this Hanumanji. And Surasa came there. Big serpent. And she looked at Hanumanji and she said, Aha! Today the gods have given me food. And then Hanumanji looked around and he was the only thing there. <laughs> I am the food. She said, yes, you come here and enter my mouth. Then he said, Ma, Ram Kaja Kari Phiri Mai Aavo, I am going to do some work of Bhagwan Shri Ram. And when I come back, then you can eat me. As long as I finish the work of Ram. He said, she said, what do you think, I was born yesterday or what? <laughs> <laughs> Meaning to say, where have you seen a predator will tell the prey, Okay, go home and finish your work and come back. That doesn't happen. What do you, what do you think? So, she, she said, nothing doing. Now I'll eat you. And then she opened her mouth this big. Then he became twice as big. And like that, it, this thing went on for a long, and then she opened her mouth from, from here to San Diego. <laughs> that much big, you know. And he was going on bigger and bigger like that. And suddenly, in a flash, he took a small form, as small as a mosquito even. And he went into her mouth and came back. He said, you see, you told me, come enter your mouth. I entered, you did not do anything. Because, <laughs> because she couldn't close her mouth as, as far. Even if you come here like a supersonic jet, she'll still take an hour. <laughs> He had enough time to go there to see how many cavities she had also. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and he came back out and he said, and she said, my dear, you're a very, very shrewd monkey. You're very smart. And I bless you. And I, I'm sure you will be successful in your mission. She sent him off with blessings also. Surasa represents greed. Greed. Greed means, the more you see, more you want. More you see, more you want. See that? So her mouth, in other words, see, I, I see this one thing here, so I open my mouth to gobble that thing. But that thing gets bigger. So I open my mouth, bigger. You see that? The human being, there's never enough for him, you know. Gandhiji used to say, this world has enough for every man's need, but this world does not have sufficient even for one man's greed. Because the human being, have you ever seen any person in this world, you give him one million, and then next day you come back, Bhaiya, I have an extra million, you please take it. <laughs> He'll say, no, 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 I, I, yesterday you gave me one million, you know, I don't want you, please find somebody else and give. <laughs> you, you'll find anybody like that. No, 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 I didn't know what he will be there. Like, he will say, you show only one you have, you don't have two. <laughs> the human being knows this thing, knows no end. So she represents the greed. And now, a very important thing. The next one which is coming up there is Simhika. And why she gives one blow to Simhika? After this Surasa, Simhika is coming up. He gives one blow to the Simhika and he kills her. This Surasa, which is greed, he doesn't kill, you know, he outwits. He outwits her. And this is a very interesting thing because greed is of such a nature, of such a thing, greed is such a thing that though it is very dangerous for a sadhaka, this entire human existence is running on greed. You know this whole global economy and every day everybody talking about 6%, 6.5% growth and this and that and all you know, stock market going up and down and every single thing is running on greed. All businesses, all such things, they're all running on greed. If it were not, businesses would open, business people will open businesses and they will take all the profits and share it equally for all the workers. Correct? 
if it were not running on greed. You just see, the whole international economy is running on this one thing. So, it is necessary for the whole of humanity to go on with its work. Greed is necessary, but at the same time, a sadhaka should not, a sadhaka should make sure that he is not outwitted by greed, but he outwits greed. Any person who wants to reach the self, anybody who wants to realize paramatma or the bliss of the self, that person has to make sure that the greed doesn't get the better of him. That is the idea. Eh? So here he outwits this Surasa and now I tell you, she blesses him. I tell you, the person who is able to renounce this greed, because greed is always for something of the world. We want more, we get one, we want two, we get two, we want four, right? So it's always trying to get more and more. And what is the nature of the world, you know? That thing which we run after, that thing eludes us eternally. Correct or not? Things of the world are like butterflies. The butterfly comes here and sits there. Then you go there and you try to grab a butterfly flies away. And then it goes to another flower. And you go there also, and you try to, then it flies to another flower. And you keep chasing. And if, if you keep silent, you sit quietly and you stay in that flower garden, that butterfly will come and sit on your shoulder by himself. He says, Mina mange moti mile. Mange mile na? Bhik. This is the nature of the world, actually. For the one who doesn't run after that thing, that thing comes after him. And for the one who runs, runs, and he runs his whole life, and he runs out of life. <laughs> Running after that thing. This is the nature of sansar. It's elusive. I was telling you yesterday, something that is changing. You cannot know that, oh, not yesterday, this morning. In morning class. Something that is changing, the universe is changing or not? Everything is changing every moment. So you cannot put your finger on it. By the time you try to ascertain what is that, it has already changed. So, like that, the world is elusive. And then, so, we try to run after an elusive world. It eludes us. Eternally. So now, the one who sits quietly, the world runs after. That is why people go from all over the world go to see saints and sages. Saints and sages just sit there. They don't run after anybody or anything, but people go to see them. So now, in the same way as he outwitted greed, greed blessed him. Surasa blessed him. You will be successful in your mission. You will surely achieve. Now, he uses in Two words and two replies already. Hanumanji has used a most wonderful phrase two times already. Yeah? Please pay attention to this phrase. It comes also in, in our Hanuman Chalisa. See in the Doha, in the top, Ram Kaj ki inhe binu mohi kaha bishram. Ram Kaj word comes there, eh? phrase. And if you see here now, he tells to Surasa also, Ma. I have some work to do. I want to go and do the work of Ram. See, Ram Kaj Kari Piri Mai Awo. I have to do some work for Ram. And in the morning class, when we saw it today, we saw that this sadhaka enters this path. A sadhaka, a jiva, who is a spiritual aspirant, he enters the path by doing so many punya karma, so much punya karma of so many lifetimes accumulated, then only he gets an opportunity to enter the, the path. Mm. So here this Ram Kaj means doing the work of Ram. Ram Kaj Karibeko Atur. In Hanuman Chalisa, this phrase comes more than once. So this Ram Kaj word, we should all remember. Ram Kaj. I, and now, this Ram Kaj is very important from another standpoint. Ram Kaj is actually Karma Yoga. Karma Yoga means I do the work and dedicate it to the Lord. 
So I'm doing, whatever you are doing now, people feel that, you know, I'm working in a worker day world, I'm working in the corporate world, and I'm all into materialism and this thing and that thing. There is no such thing. Eh? You have to spiritualize what you consider to be your material world. And that just requires that you change your vision and your attitude and your outlook with regard to what you are doing right now. You see that you are making your contribution to the great big organism called as humanity, society. So you are making your, like every cell in your body is making a contribution. Once you see that you are playing your role and you are doing your part and you are doing it with sincerity and doing it for the welfare and benefit of the whole, you have just spiritualized your whole environment. It doesn't require you coming out from where you are or any such thing. You're just doing your role. And in, in this body, different cells do different things. Isn't it? In the very same way, all of us in this cosmic organism, we are all cells doing something. So you have to see your role as part and parcel of that bigger whole. Once that is seen, you have spiritualized your... And that is called Ramakaj. Right now we are doing Swakaj. There is no Ramakaj. Everybody is doing his own. We are trying to eke out a little bit there and a little bit there. Or try to get our piece of the pie. Have you heard that thing? Everybody is trying to get his piece of the pie. And if I get a bigger piece and you don't get better. This is how the world is running. So this is Swakaj. You see? But it has to be Ramakaj. So Hanuman is on this mission to do this work of Bhagwan Ram. And he cares about nothing else. Ramakaj sabukari hahu tuma bala buddhi nithan, she told. You are the very storehouse of bala and buddhi in strength and intelligence. You're very smart. Asisha dei gai so harashik chaleu hanuman. This is duha number two. Hmm? Now, he gets the blessings of Surasa. And after duha number two, he continues on that. Shri Ram Jaya Ram Jaya Jaya Rama Shri Ram Jaya Ram Shri Ram Jaya Ram Jaya Jaya Rama Shri Ram Nisichar Ek Sin Mahurai Shri Ram Jaya Ram Kari Maya Nab Ke Khag Gahai Jeeva Jan Tujhe Gagan Udahi Shri Ram Jal bilo ki tin kai pari chahi Gahai chah sak son uđai Ehi bidi sada gagan So it shall have no man Marit par gaya umati thira Jai Jai Ram
सियावर रामचंद्र की जय निशिचरी एक सिंधु महु रही नाउ अंडर द ओशन लिव दिस निशिचरी निशिचरी मीन्स राक्षसी इन इंग्लिश दे नो वर्ड फॉर दिस इन इंग्लिश वी ट्रांसलेट एज डिमोनेस and demons and all that so but the words are not the same so nisichari nisichari means who move about in the night night creatures nocturnal creatures so it means they are always up to something bad devious plans like that kari maya na bakke khaga gahi and she had a very special power she was living under the ocean and she had a very special power what is that whenever anything is flying they cast a shadow on the ocean she could hold that shadow and pull them down what a power she had so hanuman ji is flying at 49000 feet and he realizes he is losing altitude <laughs> what is this <laughs> huh? she will pull down all the flying things and eat them so soi chala hanuman kah ki na tasu kapat kapi turat hi china immediately he realized that oh something is a miss here something is going on this is the chari is there hiding and he realized what uh, evil she was engaged in and it's it to see that she is very good at certain things eh? he wraps up that katha in a half a chopai actually instead of half quarter chopai mm-hmm. yeah tahi mari maruta satabira he killed her bari ri paad gaye mati di and he reached the other show how quick <laughs> half a chopai whole thing finish and in some other places he'll go on if when he's in balkan he's talking about the name of bhagwan ram at that time when he starts talking about the name of the bhagwan ram ramana sakahira naam gun gai so bhagwan ram also cannot describe his own name there he goes on for pages and pages and pages and like this this katha half a chopai but he, that alone will tell you and i told you the genius of his writing that alone will tell you what is important and what is not important you see this surasa represents a number of things surasa am i saying ka sorry simika represents jealousy simika also represents a parasitic existence a parasitic existence is those who take from society without giving back anything in return and here our chin my mission pledge says what we should yes. produce more than what we consume and give more than what we take but and all prey and all predators in the world right those predators they exert have you seen a lion trying to catch a deer how much they run and how much they exert in order to get food they do something but this uh, simika <laughs> come here i lead you now so living off the world without really doing anything just sit there and eat without exerting and without contributing and doing something we should not take anything from this world that's why the pledge is designed like that Uh, we should always make sure i remember uh, uh, at the time when we were graduating our puja guru they used to say to us that if you don't on a particular day if you don't do any work that day you should not eat like that type of serious thing you see so no work you just sit there you know, and also hidden stena sa uchyate bhagwan shri krishna calls in bhagavad gita he is a thief who takes from the society without giving back such a person does not have a place in society the other thing is you know just now i showed you we found some benefit for greed greed is running the whole international economy so there is still some place for greed 
So he doesn't kill greed. He doesn't kill the surasa. But jealousy, where is their place? One blow he gives. I have, many, many years I have tried to, to um, find out some positive effect of jealousy, you know. <laughs> it's very difficult to find. So people say, no, 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 I'm jealous of that fellow. He is prospering so much, so I'm going to work hard also, and I will prosper like him. And it's prosperity which is achieved like that. You will never enjoy. If you get prosperity out of jealousy, that prosperity will not bring anything to you. So it really is very difficult to find a positive effect for jealousy. So it's no place is there. So he gives one blow. On. You know, why is, it, why is it, she represents jealousy, you know? Jealousy is like this. In, uh, in uh, Sanskrit, it's called a matsara. Matsara means? Matsarati means he who goes higher than me. So he's going higher, I will pull him down. We don't like anybody who is uh, going beyond me. I? That is called crab in the barrel syndrome. Have you heard that? When you put crabs in a barrel, you never have to cover that barrel. Because as soon as one crab tries to climb out, the other one will. But what does he need for cover? You don't need to cover it. You know. So now he's going high. Anybody who's going high, she pulls them down. And then also she's living off society. So the, all of these different things are represented by... Now see, in our life also, the way to get rid of the jealousy, you know. If some, somebody achieves something or gets something which I had wanted, I should learn to be happy for that person. Mm. So to, to I'll remove this jealousy from my own life. So in, these are very simple, what we call as simple durgunas. You know? But really speaking, I tell you, look here. In Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan Sri Krishna describes the mind of a muni. Na ingate spiritaha. Means that Mind is like a flame standing in a windless spot. That flame never flickers. And such a mind is required for dwelling on the self. And if these durgunas are not removed from our personality, that mind will never be able to sit like what Bhagavan Sri Krishna is describing there. This is why we have to go on removing all these durgunas one by one. And so the person will be able to realize himself. The moment he tries to settle that mind on the self, he says, Let that mind stay in the self and not move. How will do it if these Durgunas are there? They will make sure that that mind flutters and mind runs wild. You see? This is why all these negative traits have to be removed. So Hanumanji is going there and he's on his most sacred journey to find the peace of the self. And so he's demonstrating as he goes all of the things that are supposed to be removed. You see? Now he reaches on the other side and he marvels at all the beauty and everything there. Now after number three. After number three, Doha, now on that side he sees who is there. On the other shore, Lankini. Lankini is guarding. Lankini is the immigration officer. Our bechara Hanumanji, uske pas passport bhi nahi hai, visa bhi nahi hai, kuch nahi hai. And that let the visa officer, even the passport officer is there, TSA or whatever you call it, Customs and Immigration Officer. Now see what he does. After number three now. Masaka Saman Rupa Kapithari Shri Ram Jaya Ram Jaya Jaya Ram Lankai Chale Hari 
नाम लंकिनी एक निशिचारी श्री राम सो कह चल सी मोही निंदरी श्री राम जय राम जाने ही नहीं मरम सठ मोरा श्री राम जय राम मोर आहार जहा लगी चोरा श्री राम जय मुठिका एक महाकपिहानी रुधिर बमत धरनी धनमानी कोई संभावी उठी जोरी पानी कर बिनय जब रावण ब्रह्म बर दीना चलत बिरंजी का मोई चीना बिकल हो सीत कपि के मारे श्री राम जय तब जाने सुनी से चर संघारे जय रघुराम जय सीताराम जय सीताराम सियावर रामचंद्र की जय मसक समान रूप कपि धरी ही टुक फॉर्म अस स्मॉल एज अ मस्किटो इट इज फोर क्लॉक इन द मॉर्निंग प्लेस इज डार्क वेर वुड यू फाइन सच अ लॉयल एंड डेडिकेटेड इमिग्रेशन ऑफिसर हु कैन सी अ मस्किटो इन द डार्क शी वॉज सो डेडिकेटेड टू रावण that she could see a little mosquito either that or they had very advanced radar system that could even see a mosquito you know masak saman roop kapi dhari lank hi chale hi chaleu so meri nar hari and he he remembers nar hari his ishta devta is ram oh, what an amazing thing i tell you tulsi da ji is writing and he is supposed to remember ram because he when he left just now we saw yesterday he remember ram so many times when he was leaving now he is entering lanka he is supposed to remember ram again he remember narahari mean narasimha bhagwan so to see that he writing writing no no he can't write ram here he has to remember narasimha bhagwan because narasimha bhagwan is the lord to remember when things seem impossible it seemed impossible that anybody will be able to kill hiranyakashipu because he cannot be killed outside nor inside he cannot be killed by man nor animal he cannot be killed in night time nor day time he cannot be killed up nor down all these you see impossible to kill him but bhagwan is the one who makes the impossible possible and bhagwan the buck stops with bhagwan when we feel that we have figured out things or we know things we better think again 
And in Bhagwan's dictionary, there is no word called as impossible. Anything which looks impossible, that Lord can make that thing possible. Bhagwan uh, Bhagwan Ram Krishna Paramahamsa used to have a devotee. And he, he said one day to Bhagwan Ram Krishna Paramahamsa, he said, look at this. Even Bhagwan has his hands tied in certain things. Because now he has made this hibiscus tree to give red flowers. Now he also cannot do anything. Because now his hands have become tied. He only has to give red flowers. Ram Krishna Paramahamsa told, don't ever tell. The next day, on the same branch of the same tree, there was a red hibiscus and a white hibiscus. He called that devotee to see that thing. So there is no such thing as impossible in Bhagwan's dictionary. And so, that Lord who himself gave the boon, to Hiranyakashipu. The Lord himself is giving boon to Hiranyakashipu, which made it seem that it will be impossible to kill him. The Lord always have some extra tricks up his sleeve. So he came there and removed that Hiranyakashipu. And so, when anything seems impossible, the Lord to remember is Narasimha Bhagwan. So here, into he entered this Lanka now, he, it means to say when he saw Lankini and he saw the fortification of Lanka, how it is so well protected, it seemed as though it is impossible to penetrate this Lanka. And so he remembers now Narasimha Bhagwan. Narahari. Then, Nama Lankini Ek Nisichari So Kaha Chalesi Mohi Nindari. She, she shouted out, Oh, you disrespectful monkey. Means you, you're disrespecting me and entering. You, you did not see immigration here or what? <laughs> what is this? Where is your passport and your visa? Now you show. Huh? Ja, no, so she called him disrespectful first. Then, ja nahi nahi, maram satamora. you don't know my greatness, you fool. And she calls him a fool. <laughs> what names are she? First, disrespectful. Then, second, fool. Then third, more ahara jaha lagi chora. Chor no. For after the word chor, how Tusidashi juxtaposes, juxtaposes the words also. After the word chor, the next word is muthika. See. The moment the word came out from her mouth, chor, he gave one blow to her. And then, dharam, she fell down like that. So the two words are next to each other. See, if you call me disrespectful, it may be true. <laughs> if you call me fool, it may also be true. But not chore. Means to say, and see a very interesting thing. You are working for the biggest chore in the history of human civilization. And you never one day call him chore. And this poor monkey Hanumanji never even stole a banana in his whole life. Never anything he stole. And then she's calling him? Chor. Sure. Sure. It's very... <laughs> so that is called a delusion. Lankini represents delusion. Now what is delusion, you know? I'll tell you. Delusion is when something is in a particular way. It is like this. But you see, or you think, or you understand, opposite to that thing. That is called a delusion. It is like this, like, there's a rope there, but you see a snake there. You see, this is the opposite thing. This rope is jada vastu. This is, this is one is chetan. Snake is living. There is no living thing there. So you are seeing everything opposite. Like that. And our entire life is based on delusion. Eh? We see everything upside down. Ulta, ulta, everything. Say, I'll tell you. The first thing in the morning when you wake up, you say, aha, the sun has arisen. Hmm? Yeah, the sun doesn't rise. You rose. <laughs> The sun rises or what? No, so I see the first thing in the morning is delusion. 
बिकॉज जैसे ही उल्टा करेक्ट और नॉट एवरीथिंग इन ह्यूमन लाइफ इज बेस्ड ऑन डिलूजन सेकेंड थिंग यू राइट दे ऑल्सो आई वोक अप अरे आई आई एम नॉट दी बॉडी माइंड इंटेलेक्ट आई एम दी सेल्फ दी सेल्फ डजेंट स्लीप नो वेक डिलूजन अगेन और नॉट I am the self. The self never sleeps or wakes. So every single thing in a human life is delusion. Delusion means when the thing is one way, and we see, think, or understand opposite to that thing. That thing is called as delusion. Now, delusion he here gives one blow to Lankini, and Lankini falls down, bleeding. From her mouth, and all blood comes out, and then she stands up, just like Bhishma Pitama in, in Mahabharata and all. And all the blood came out. Then sense came to her. Then she got up and she put her hand together. Oh my dear Hanuman ji, thank you very much. That moment of satsang. <laughs> <laughs> satsang was one blow. That moment of satsang. Then my eyes opened. And and this is a very very important thing. Really, see one fellow. He had a cow, and it was in the height of summer, and all the grass outside had become parched and dried and brown color. And he put the cow there. Which intelligent cow will eat <laughs> and dry grass? Certainly not an Indian cow. Or maybe you know. At any rate, so he found a very nice solution. He went down the street and bought some nice green shades and put it on for the cow. You know, <laughs> the cow cleaned out everything there, you know, like, like a lawnmower. You know, <laughs> anyway. the idea is the delusion the, the reason for us seeing the world upside down is something is wrong with our vision so the vision has to be made right side up the vision has to change yeah? that has to be made right side up and all the wrong notions have to be knocked out all the wrong notions have to be knocked out and you know there is only one place listen here we may say whatever we want and we may be whatever type of intellectual we want but until we find ourselves in satsang those wrong notions will not be knocked out you may read whatever text you want and study and there many people who pride themselves i am self taught <laughs> people say like that eh i am self taught you can in certain things But not in Vedanta. Tulsi Das himself writes in the same Ramayana: "Guru binu bhava nidhi tarai na koi." Without a guru, nobody crosses over this sansar. And he gives in the next line: "Jau bi ranchi sankar samhoi." Even if that person be the equivalent of Brahma ji, of Mahesh, of Vishnu, whoever. That was Bhagwan Ram had guru, isn't it? Bhagwan Krishna had guru. So in spirituality, there is no self thing as self taught. No, 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 Swami Ji. What about Bhagwan Sri Ramana Maharishi, Ram Krishna Paramahansa? They did not have guru, and they realized. I said, "You are Ramana Maharishi, or what? What are you doing in this class?" But <laughs> if you are Ramana Maharishi, you will not be here to ask that. Question, isn't it? And there's always, to every rule, there's always an exception. The peculiar thing about thing about human being, he always feels he's the exception. <laughs> ah. This is an amazing thing. One elephant was crossing over a bridge, hmm? wooden bridge. And in the middle of that bridge, that bridge collapsed. 
The elephant fell in the water and then swam out and reached the other side. There was a flea living in his air. <laughs> then when he reached the other side, the flea said, I told you that bridge could not take both of our weight. This is a jiva, you know, he always thinks so much of him, himself. It is a very peculiar thing. So, in spirituality, that guru is always required. And in satsang, with gurus, there is where all wrong notions get knocked out. So she called that a moment of satsang. And she, delusion is not to be removed. Um, delusion is not to be killed. Delusion is to be made right side up. From upside down to right side up. And she blesses him, thanks him and everything. And she said, you go into Lanka, you will certainly be successful in your mission. She again blessed. At each time we overcome an obstacle, we are blessed. That obstacle itself blesses us. In other words, it leaves us with more strength, more enthusiasm. It leaves us with more inspiration whenever we overcome any obstacle and more inner determination and so many things. So he keeps getting blessed by all of them as he goes along on this journey. No. He, this is delusion. Making, seeing things right side up. Now he goes into Lanka looking everywhere for Sita Ji you now and tomorrow we'll see he encounters Vibhishan hmm? again he'll have such a very interesting encounter also okay Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Rama Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Rama Shri Ram Jai Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Rama Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadai Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Gurbhyo Namah